Hello everybody. Um, I'm making a uh, video response. That's what they call them. For a user um, whose name is uh, on the on YouTube, Aristo Man. His name is Henry. He lives in Japan, 100 kilometers or miles. I think kilometers from uh, Fukushima, Daiichi power plant. And he's concerned, he has um, children, he lives there, he's concerned, he has reason, good reason why to be concerned for his health, and he doesn't really uh, trust everything that the authorities are telling him. So as any in intelligent person, he tried to make his own calculates, ca calculations. And now there is a big deal in Japan about the food, which is contaminated they raise the levels of the admissible becquerels per kilogram in food. Now let's say that you eat a kilogram of food every day, if your food has four to six becquerels per kilogram, in Germany they say, uh, at least in the link provided by Aristoman, that one millisiever per year will be your uh, radiation uh, generated by this stuff that you daily base. On a daily base you eat 4 to 6 becquerel per kilogram and you get 1 millisievert per year of X radiation over the background radiation. Now uh, what he asked somebody to uh, verify, to correct him if he was wrong, is if you multiply by 10 these 4 to 6 becquerel that you eat every day you get 10 times more millisieverts? Yes, that's correct. And if you do it by 100, you get 100 more time radiation uh, in sieverts on a yearly, on a year base. So you get 100 millisieverts. That's correct. And I made also this uh, graph here that calculates uh, live real-time uh, the millisieverts that you see here 188.66 millisieverts per year it's what you get from 400 becquerels of daily intake and this is the graph of it it's a curve you have the becquerel per day here sorry I disappeared somewhere yeah. and um, and you have every single day of a year from 1 to 365 over here so this is a year this is the daily uh, radiation that you emit from what you ate. You might emit something else from natural isotopes that you get. But this is what you get from the cesium that you eat. Specifically cesium. Because I inserted in my chart, in my calculus, uh, 70 days of effective have life. And under this curve, you have an area this area over here, you can do it with an integral if you prefer, is the total amount of radiation you get over a year. And this is a precise calculus, because I also consider the, again, the effective have life. It's a very precise calculus. What may be different from the Germans is uh, that a wristman was mentioning is the, the my amounts are a little bit higher over here in millisieverts per year because I didn't really know how to calculate the amount of radiation that leaves your body without uh, hitting any of your atoms, any of your cells, any of your tissues. So obviously if you have uh, radioactive stuff inside you, part of the radiation will hit your grandma and your cat and uh, your neighbors and your sky and, and the ground. more precise, more clear, the 70 effective half-life means that the biological half-life is 70 days of cesium. It's 70 days, uh, even though the physical half-life is 30 years. So after 70 days, the initial intake is reduced by one half. It reduces slowly, slowly, slowly until gets after 70 days the half of the initial intake. That's the biological half-life, which outweighs the 
physical half-life because uh, because of the decay because when the uh, radiation are emitted cesium transforms into something else and uh, it's not anymore an, uh, an unstable radioisotope uh, so I just wrote 70 okay there, there are calculus to unify the biological half-life to the um, to the physical one which can be done but in this case was not necessary it, it can be necessary for example for strontium which have a very long uh, effect uh, biological half-life uh, strontium has a uh, years of uh, biological half-life and 30 years of uh, physical so you might want to consider uh, unifying these two data into a single effective volume so in this calculus you have 400 becquerels per day which mean 188 millisieverts per year if you have as they would like in Germany only four as a limit what you let's give it a little time what you get here is 1.89 so you see it's basically the same thing that they were seeing in Germany and uh, basically it's one sievert per year so it's a little bit more I already explained why now having said all this considering that as I told right away to Aristoman when I saw his great video uh, you have to consider the fact that the carols don't tell you what's inside the, the, what are the isotopes make a big difference that are emitting those radiation so you have to consider uh, iodine uh, in a different way from uh, strontium from cesium etc having said all this I really do want to tell you that sieverts don't tell you much when you eat this stuff sieverts can help you when you're talking about radiation that passes through you from the outside without being stuck to you but when you have stuff that gets stuck to you things are different uh, a very extreme case is the one of iodine it's used in medicine because it destroys thyroid tissues and it all concentrates here that's the only place where we really do uh, deal with uh, iodine pr to produce certain hormones uh, and it, it, it just all accumulates here and it destroys your thyroid so you, you have to consider the fact that iodine concentrates in a single place and uh, what happens with other things like cesium which mimic um, potassium is that since the it's similar to potassium, it uses the same substrates, it, it binds to the same uh, proteins, etc. It uses the same pathways, but it's not the same thing, and it can get stuck. It does get stuck. Um, so, what happens is that it starts irradiating what's around it, and that can lead to very nasty stuff like cancers by. Uh, first of all making many free radicals and second of all last but not least damaging altering the DNA uh, chromosomes and mitochondria so it's uh, a bad bad thing to have this stuff inside you it's worse for the same sievers then radiation comes from the outside. But sievers don't consider the difference between internal and external radiation. So does it make sense to calculate sievers for internal radiation? No, it does not. It does not. It's not the same thing. Sieverts are an old way of considering radiation. At the time, they were very uh, cutting edge. Now they're not anymore. We should make new ways of considering this radiation. In the meanwhile, we just try to avoid eating this stuff. It's very nasty when it gets inside you. It does nasty stuff, nasty things. Okay, so 
take care.